All right. Hello, everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine, and welcome to the first video daily creative challenge here on Adobe Live. You've been asking for it. We've been polling about it for the last couple of weeks, months uh, on my Friday masterclasses, and it's so cool to finally be able to bring a DCC to all of you here on Adobe Live themed around video. And we've got five days for this particular challenge. And really, this is for anybody who's starting with Premiere, just kind of getting into video. But more importantly, this is another area, another reason for you to be part of a larger community, which we've now built uh, extensively on Discord for Photoshop and XD and Illustrator. Well, we have a Premiere Pro Discord as well. We're going to get into that in just a second. So I want to welcome everyone who's coming to us on Adobe Live as well as on Twitter Periscope and on the Premiere Pro Facebook page. Now, the conversation and all the stuff that's going around this is happening at behance.net slash Adobe Live. So that's really where you want to be. I want to invite you into this challenge. I want to get you inspired to start doing this stuff. And again, it's just another way to kind of sharpen some of your skills, show off your work with others, with your peers in the community, and then ultimately make connections that you can leverage while we're all in this new remote kind of working from home kind of world. Super cool, lots of fun, and hey, no pressure, get started, do what you want, just chime in, have some fun. Okay, so um, basically what, we're, what I want to do real quickly is just kind of orient you about where you need to go and how you can kind of get set up. I've prepared a whole series of files and other things for you that you can use. So first and foremost, what we're going to do, let me go ahead and switch over my screen. So to start, to get involved here, you're going to go to behance.net slash challenge slash premiere. And this is where you want to be to actually um, take the challenge here. As we say, you can sign up for the challenge. And each day, you're going to have a new challenge. Again, we're doing this Monday through Friday this week. Today is around editing for social. Now, one of the key elements here is joining the community chat. And I mentioned just a few moments ago, Discord. Now, you may not all be familiar with Discord. Um, again, if you've kind of, you know, if you've worked in the Twitch world, you probably know this. Um, super popular. Again, another community that we're building specifically around all of the digital video and audio apps here. We've already got a massive Discord audience for Photoshop, for XD, and for Illustrator. Here's the bit.ly so that you can get signed up into Discord. This is where all the conversation is happening. This is also where you will ultimately share the stuff that you're creating, okay? And you can do that by posting to, you know, your favorite social network, whether it's Facebook or YouTube or Vimeo or Twitter, and just embedding a link there. You can even in include things like Dropbox links if you so desire, just as a way for me and others to view the work that you're doing each and every day. Now with video, of course, it's a little bit different. It's a little more time consuming. So if you can't get to share them every day, that's fine. I'm going to be checking the Discord as such, in any case, it kind of gives you an idea here. And pretty awesome, my buddy Gus, uh, Adobe Live here is in the chat. And we've already almost doubled uh, the number of people in this Discord since we announced this challenge uh, last week. So let's keep that community building. That's really ultimately what this is all about. So you're gonna join the community chat. You're gonna watch this daily show for the next five days. I'm gonna give you a challenge. I'm gonna direct you to download some of the files here. You can see once you sign up, you'll be able to unlock all of these challenges and then share your work and get feedback from mentors, from other participants. By the way, you'll notice that inside of the Discord here, you'll see that we actually indicate uh, some of the Adobe people and some of our, our mods and things who are very much in the know. So if you want to tag us directly and ask questions. There's lots of different channels inside the Discord. You've got lots of different options to do that. All right. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the challenge today because it's a challenge for me that I have approximately 21 minutes to kind of showcase to you what you need to do <laughs> and what this challenge is about. And as mentioned, today it is specifically based around editing. Oh, and I also forgot before I, uh, before I, uh, <laughs> before I forgot to mention here, God, I'm going so quickly. Told you it's a challenge for me. The hashtag that you want to use is hashtag Premier Daily Challenge. Hashtag Premier with an E. Hashtag Premier Daily Challenge. This is how not only can we track these inside of Discord, but if you post it to Instagram, if you post it to elsewhere, this is going to allow us to see those as well. But provide us those links so it's just easier for me to see them and review them and for your peers to review them every day. So again, share it in Discord, hashtag Premier, Cre uh, da Premier Daily Challenge. Okay, let's bounce over to Premiere Pro. I'm gonna switch over to my screen here and we're gonna get started. So the first thing, really we're gonna cover about three, four things in this next 19 to 20 minutes. The basic import of the files that I provided for you, how to organize, set some in and out points, and begin building up a timeline. Uh, 
adding some basic transitions if you so desire, and then exporting that content so that you can share it on social, okay? Now, like with many Adobe, like with all Adobe apps, there's many different ways to um, to import content. So I am currently in uh, an edited, a modified version of the editing workspace. This is where I might recommend beginning. Uh, you can access this workspace, if not from the workspace bar, the top of Premiere, up in the window menu here under workspaces, you'll see all the available workspaces we have for you. All right. What's up, Jennifer? Uh, no capitals. Nope. Doesn't have to be capital at all. What's up, Steve? Joshua Graphics. How are you doing? Carolyn Brown, Lindsay, Valdair. Very nice to see you all. Okay. So inside of the editing workspace, you're going to see the project panel. All of our video apps, After Effects, Audition, we all kind of work with this project panel concept. This is where all of your assets land and ultimately where you kind of organize all of them. If you simply double click into the gray available space, inside of your project panel, you will now be able to import all of the MP4 video files that you downloaded as part of that challenge. Now I have these stored into a Dropbox folder here called Monday, April 27. So you can simply select them all like this and click import and it will bring the content in for you that way. You also have something called the media browser, which you can find under the window menu here in Premiere. This is yet another way for you to actually review the footage before you bring it in. Now you don't have to use all the clips that I provided. Again, you're making a short little edit and I'll show you an example at the end of the kind of thing that we're kind of looking for, but it's just an idea. You could make this whatever you want. It could be one long clip treated with color and other things. We're just looking to get you kind of into the editing basics, the very basics of getting into Premiere to start this challenge. So if you go to the media browser, which I happen to have docked right here, again, this allows you to see all of your footage at a glance and even review through it. So if I double click on this folder where I have all of my content, now you can see all of the footage. By the way, all of this is content that I shot uh, in a place called Sabi Sabi in Africa. Uh, a couple of years ago when I was down there doing a shoot and uh, with my colleague Terry White, whom you just saw moments ago. And you can see there's lots of very just beautiful, gorgeous shots of animals here. We got very lucky, very fortunate to see uh, all of the big five. Uh, all of them aren't represented here, but this is just kind of a, a mixture of different pieces of content to allow you to tell a very quick social video story. So again, as you hover over the clips, this is called hover scrubbing. You can see what the content is. Now, if you want to take a piece of this footage, maybe not this whole clip, maybe just a very short little section, you can actually click inside of it. And when you do that, you'll see that there's a, there's a little scrubbable playhead right here. So you can scrub through the footage. And then if you use the I and O keys on your keyboard, in for uh, I for in and O for out. Now you will import just this section that we see in blue here. Okay. If you want to do that now, I'm going to show you in a moment how you can trim these in the timeline as well. That's entirely up to you, but you can actually set the in and out points right here from the media browser. And if I just click, if I just dock this over here for a second, I just want to show you, if I go ahead and do that, I've got my in and out points here. If I simply drag this from the media browser into the project panel, now this specific section of the element, I double clicked on it, it brought it into the source monitor. This is typically where you will also set in and out points. You'll see that they're already set for me, the section that I want exactly as it is, okay? So again, you can kind of review the section that you've imported, okay? And you can do this for each and all of those clips, or you can simply select all of them and drag them into Premiere Pro however you like, okay? And there's even additional ways to bring in footage, just kind of showing you the initial idea, right? So in the media browser, what's nice is you can scrub through it. If you click into the clip, you can use this little playhead to again, continue to scrub through. You can hit I and O to make a selection of a specific piece. These are all fairly short. Uh, I think the longest clip in here is 10 seconds. So, you know, it's entirely up to you but this just allows you to see everything at a glance. It's also nice because you have the uh, your little zoom bar here. So again, you can kind of get a really good good idea of what this content looks like. You know, just some really beautiful, if I do say so myself, shots uh, <laughs> of some amazing animals here. All right, this is a beautiful sabi sabi sunrise uh, and some landscape. You get the idea. These are already graded, by the way, so they're ready to deliver. You can also mess about with color. That's not part of today's challenge. 
Okay, so once you have all of the content inside of your project here, again, this is now where you want to begin to assemble your timeline. Now, uh, what I'm showing you here, this is this is all here. Actually, let me go to my, this is all of the uh, Sabi Sabi content where I made these selections for you. Now, if you want to kind of storyboard it first, you can do it inside the project panel, okay? Now, you have three different ways to view your content in here. We have the list view, which is this. And this is just going to show you, you know, all the clips with their relative time and everything else. And that's great, but that's not great for organization, okay? Um, however, we also have an icon view. Oh, you can't see that. Sorry, my head's blocking it. Icon view and freeform view, all right? We're gonna focus on the icon view today. That's really the easiest one. And the idea with this is, this just allows you to take your footage, again, from a glance, and you can click and drag and order the content the way you want. So let's say I want this sunrise shot, and then this shot here, and then this shot of the lion, and then actually maybe I want this driving into the desert shot here, and then we'll have this wildebeest shot like that, and this bird shot right here. Again, you get the idea. You can organize these however you want and basically storyboard out your content, okay? Once you've done that, you can then select your clips first to last, so there's 10 of them here, all right? So I just held down my shift key, clicked on the first one, clicked on the last one, and then from there, I'm simply going to say new sequence from clip, okay? Now, all of these are the same resolution. They're all 1080p. They're all the same frame rate, 23976. So I can choose new sequence from clip, and it's going to do just that. It's going to build this large timeline for me with all of my content already laid out just like that. Now, just to kind of showcase a couple of quick housekeeping things here inside of Premiere, when you bring in your content, your tracks may be fairly small. So you'll see that if you hover over these track dividers, you can adjust the track height manually just like that. This is kind of nice because it allows you just to see everything better um, at a glance. If you hit the, backs uh, the backslash key, that's on the US keyboard, this will also bring all of your video footage into view. Uh, if you hit the plus and minus keys, of course, you can zoom in accordingly, all right? And if you want to see, I typically like to see all of the video frames. Uh, you'll see that if you click on the flyout menu here, so this is the sequence that it created. If I click on this little, I think we call it the hamburger menu, actually, um, you have a couple of options here, how to view your content in the timeline. Video head and tail. So you'll see the first frame and the last frame. That's kind of what that looks like, all right? If you like that, I like all of them. Video head thumbnail, so just, again, just the header, just the very first frame, or if you want to be able to see everything, continuous video thumbnails. And I like this because it just kind of gives me a better idea of what I'm dealing with, right? And again, I'm using the plus and minus keys to zoom in and zoom out accordingly of that timeline. Now there's no audio in these. If you want to add a royalty-free soundtrack of your choice, that's up to you. You can add commercial music, but if you're gonna share it on something like YouTube, it's gonna get flagged and you know we don't want that to happen to you. So I'll leave that up to you. Again, this part of the challenge does not require sound, all right? What's up, Lindsay Palmer? All right, just checking back at some of our chats here. Carolyn Brown, how's it going? All right, what is up, Paco? Julia, so great to see you as well. Asha Yunus, okay. Okay, uh, Tunch is asking, if I trim and drag a part, is original whole video will make busy my RAM usage? Uh, no, I mean, not necessarily. Now, obviously, we have specific requirements, you know, for leveraging Premiere today. In fact, we have a new, um, a new hardware uh, requirement guide. I can post this in the Discord afterwards. Uh, we do actually recommend for the modern video editor, 32 gigs of RAM. That's not that you have to have that. You can have 16, you can have less. 16 is you know probably about the minimum of where you want to be. But these clips are all highly optimized for you. I, I specifically made them so they're just small and easy to download. Uh, I think it's 10 or 11 clips and it's about 70 megs, you know, for you know all 1080p. So they're pretty much optimized to allow you to get sort of the best download speed and decent performance while editing inside of Premiere. 
Okay. All right. So let's quickly, we've got 10 minutes. Let's talk about some editing tools. Okay. Now, just like with Photoshop, you have a series, a variety of different tools that you can use inside of Premiere. The first, of course, is the selection tool, also kind of in, in you know, uh, our design apps, the move tool, same concept here. And if you hover over the edge of a clip, you'll see you'll get these little red arrow indicators. This is going to allow you to, again, adjust the length of that clip in the timeline, the beginning and the end, just like that with the move tool, okay? Now, you've got a couple of different tools here. We're gonna actually focus on, let me see, I wanna show you the razor tool here. Uh, you have the ripple edit tool. All right, now this is typically what people will want to do. I'm gonna show you this in lieu of using the keyboard shortcut. So instead of just trimming the edge, right? So when I moved the edge with the move tool, it left a hole here. So what I would now have to do is click this other clip and drag it back into position. But once I've done that, of course, I put another hole at the end of the other clip. So I don't wanna do that. I actually want to adjust the end or the beginning of a clip and have everything kind of snap back into place. That is what the ripple edit tool is for. That is specifically what that does. So if you choose the ripple edit tool, you'll see you're actually going to get a yellow, yellow icon. And now when I move this and it's showing you how you're adjusting this in frames, it'll do just that. It's going to slip and slide my clips accordingly right? So you can adjust the durations. It keeps everything perfectly aligned, snapped together. This is also somewhat known as, uh, we talk about this in Rush, of course, like a magnetic timeline, so that you never have any of those gaps. And by the way, it works the other way too. So if I wanted to extend this Wildebeest clip, I'm making it longer here, it'll do just that, okay? Now, obviously you can't extend it if, there's, if you're already at the beginning. But the Ripple Edit tool is amazing because it just allows you to, again, adjust duration, but that whole timeline stays intact, okay? Very, very simple. Now, what if you have a longer clip and you wanna cut it into different sections, you wanna do something else, or maybe you're wanting to overlay multiple clips. It's worth pointing out here that again, if I hit my, now this is on the US keyboard, it's the tilde key to go full screen mode. You know, you have multiple video tracks. The default is to show three. So you could, again, uh, using the move tool here, I could pick this up and stick this video on another track or another track or even a track that doesn't exist yet if I wanna overlay things. Again, this is a real basic challenge today, so I'm not gonna ask all of that of you, but the idea being that what if you wanted to actually do a cut while it was inside of the timeline? Okay, so this is going to be the razor tool. It is also shortcut key C here. Go ahead and take your razor tool, find where you want to place a cut all right, you'd probably first kind of scrub to that section. All right, maybe right there and cut just like that. And now we've made an edit, all right? And similarly, if I wanted to come in now and maybe I want to ripple these because I want to do some kind of a transition, I could ripple the edge of that. I could ripple the edge of that. And again, everything stays seamlessly locked together, okay? Again, I can come back over here. Let's say we want to place another cut. This whole section here is a bit jumpy. I don't want any of this. So maybe I'll leave it right there. Cut, okay? And then I'm gonna go back to my move tool. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say ripple delete. So what if I wanna take this whole section out but I want everything else to snap into place? Well, just like the ripple edit tool, ripple delete, that was a right click or control click function. <laughs> Takes that clip out and snaps everything else back into place, okay? All right, Daniel Bozuto, can you designate multiple clips within one media file for importing or do you have to choose each one separately and import it separately? Oh, no, 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 you can just select all of them and import them all simultaneously. I was just showing you individuals to show you how you could do in and out points and manual selections, but by all means, bring them all in first, all right? And then kind of play around. Just trying to show you again, different options based on everybody's different uh, skill sets. All right, Jennifer Poole, yes. They will most likely be answered during this challenge. Yes, Jennifer. And again, that's where the Discord is coming is going to come into play. I'll be in the Discord all week. So ask your questions there. We're going so fast. I've got six more minutes to show you transitions and export. This is this is rapid. Now, look, I've also got resources here on Behance. Uh, you can check out the Premiere Pro video masterclasses. I believe we have a playlist for that. Um, so you can check those out. I actually have some fundamentals for editing in Premiere, editing basics, and I go more into depth in more in depth on import and some of the editing options and export as well. But so you have some other resources um, if this is going a bit fast. But this is the first challenge. So hey, 
Sign up with the Discord. Let's get involved. Ask questions directly. We are here to answer them. Okay. Sweet, sweet, sweet. What's up, Derek? All right. Nice, Andy. Okay. Uh, Marco Russell, can you create audio in Audition and link that to the Premiere file timeline? Yes, you absolutely can, Marco. Now, um, I'm not going to show that here today. I'm, I will cover a little bit of that. I don't remember which day it is, but we do have a cutting to the beat of, the, of audio in the timeline, and I can show that Audition workflow. This is something that I actually just did uh, in Adobe Live on called Dynamic Link. I believe it was actually last week. So if you check out Adobe Live Masterclass from last week or two weeks ago, I show the Audition dynamic link and how to bring content from Audition into Premiere. Okay. Paula O'Brien, no, those edits are not destructive. Everything in here is non-destructive and that's a great, great thing to bring up. Okay. So now we're cutting, we're doing transitions, we're doing all these things and we want some kind of way to smooth the content together. So I'm gonna go up to my effects. If you don't see the effects menu, you can always open up that panel again under the window menu here. And we have something in here called video transitions. And if you go under dissolve, these are all of your standard, standard styled uh, transitions that you're um, probably most, most familiar with. Okay. So if I wanted to add, I'm just going to take a clip out here. Uh, if I wanted to add a transition to something in here. All right, hold on, I'm just gonna do a quick edit so I know that this is gonna look all right. I could take something like the cross dissolve, the most common, also sometimes the most, the most despised, and I can simply drag it over top of my clips. And when I zoom in here, you'll see that you can actually see the transition. I have the ability here, if I hover my mouse over it, to adjust the length of that transition. So if I were to wind this back, all right, and play it, you can see how it's transitioning with that cross dissolve into this other clip. Select that, dissolve, hit delete, and get rid of it. We also have things like dip to white. That is that very fast white flash that you see a lot. <laughs> very common. Again, used to be kind of despised. Now it's coming back in vogue again. Um, just a way to transition between clips. You can also create your own transitions with additional video. It's worth pointing out. If you want to grab some of your own content to uh, augment this edit, or if you want to use something like some kind of faux light leak, you can download clips of light leaks. Those are sometimes used as transitional elements. Just trying to show you that this is where you can find them. So again, it's important to have your track height uh, elongated because otherwise it's going to be very difficult to see those transitions. And if you select the transition and hover your mouse over it, you'll see that the mouse cursor will change and this allows you to adjust duration. Also, by the way, if you hold down shift and command, this will allow you to create an asymmetri uh, asymmetrical transition as well. All right. So this is kind of neat sometimes if you want one clip to, you know, uh, last a little bit longer in the transition. Okay, and the very final step here, once you've done this, we're now going to export to be able to share socially. All right, so we're gonna go to, with our timeline selected, make sure that you have this selected here. You'll see the blue bar around it. Go up to File, Export, Media. All right, now these are all 1080p clips. So I'm going to recommend that you go up to Format and choose H.264 for the format. Oops, sorry, I changed that, but I didn't mean to do that. And then under preset, if you scroll all the way down towards the bottom, you will see that we have specific YouTube presets. And I would recommend choosing this YouTube 1080p one. You can also choose the 720p if you so desire. Now, if you're gonna share this on Twitter, you can choose the Twitter preset. Or if you're gonna share it on Facebook, you can choose one of the Facebook presets. And again, link to those inside uh, of the Discord, okay? So you have lots of flexibility there, but I just wanna point out format H.264 and then go under preset. If you're gonna push it to YouTube or you just want a, a standard 1080p, I highly recommend the YouTube 1080p full HD preset, okay? Output name, give it a name and just tell it, click here to tell it where you want it to save it. I might save it to my desktop or wherever like that, okay? And then click export and you're done. It's that simple, all right? And last thing I wanna show you here, if you wanna get really creative and go that extra step and specifically reformat it for social, we have something called auto reframe. So I'm gonna take this timeline here, which is called Sabi. Actually, I'm gonna use this one here, this little Sabi edit. So this is kind of showing you something that I did real quickly, all right? I know we've got like a minute here to, to make this happen. 
So many questions going so quickly. You can see I use some of those flash transitions. This just kind of shows you something that you might do. All right, there's also a Mogert file in there if you want to get experimental. We're not going to go into that right now. If I right click on this sequence, I can choose auto reframe sequence, which will automatically reframe this for a specific size. Let's say I want it to go to square or vertical or some other aspect ratio. I want to do a square one for Instagram. Let's go ahead and create that. All I did was right click auto reframe sequence and choose square and click create. And now you can see what it's done is it's taken that edit that I just showed you and it automatically reformats it for the square format for vertical for whatever it is. So this is a little extra credit if you want to go the extra mile and do a specific social reformat again in this kind of cool aspect ratio, you can do that. Um, with auto reframe. All right, my friends, that is all the time we have. So good luck. Again, be sure to hop into the Discord there. Tell us what's happening. Share your work with us. We'll be back tomorrow with another challenge coming up now. We've got Paul Tranny who's going to be doing the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. So stick around for that. Thank you so much. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.